I was working on research around carbon neutral energy system of the future. Here we thought, could we produce food using electricity? Many food products contain added protein, which can be very resource intensive. With the increasing population of the planet, by 2050, we might need 70% more food. For me, it felt logical to try and solve this problem. My background is actually in energy engineering. I'm not a food guy at all. I needed to team up with someone who could help me to find the right solution. Pasi was looking from the energy system perspective, and I was looking from the bioprocess perspective. Quite a lot of organic material here. From a handful of dirt, we can find a microbe. Bacteria has its own collection of proteins, like we are also a mixture of different proteins. Also quite a lot of fat. But <laughs> <laughs> the general concept is pretty simple. We make food out of thin air and electricity. So we are not really farming chicken or we are not farming cows, but we are farming microbes, and that makes protein. So we let them grow, and then we kill them. <laughs> if we couldn't prove that this concept works and you could taste this food, people might not even believe that it's possible. There's an element of luck, of course. We were not exactly sure that it's going to happen. That's just the way it is. In the very initial phase, literally, we arrived in an empty garage. We built the whole pilot from scratch. We get a call from a local university. They were getting rid of their pilot reactor, and now it's our pilot reactor. The best in teaming up with Juha Pekka is that our background is so different. We kind of complement each other. He has the electricity and CO2, and I had the means to make something out of it. Every single step is critical and could be a showstopper making the media, collecting the biomass, and then the separator. Converting electricity to hydrogen, capturing CO2 from the air. Does the cell grow? Is it nutritious or not? Can you eat it? Can you integrate it to foods? When the first solene powders were got, there's this feeling called relief. Was our protein. Saving the world's easy. Yeah, it's not so difficult. So today we are making a noodle bowl with the solin tofu and then some salad boat with the solin chunks. This is our global simulation for solin production. From this map we can see what are the best locations for our future factories. Basically where we have the cheapest electricity. Places we've never associated with food production, like deserts, can be used to create our carbon neutral source of protein. In the area of 1% of the Sahara Desert, we can produce enough protein to feed the world population. I don't think anybody would have thought this possible only 10 years ago. Food is ready. Mm, looks good. Mm. When uh, there is someone who brings new skill to the table and what you couldn't do or you can't understand, it's always amazing. Crispy on the surface works very well. What we could try next is to integrate the solene in, uh, in the noodles yeah. themselves. Yeah. There are very many solutions available. Good. As long as we want to be working on this with the right mindset. There's hope for humankind. <laughs>